Hi everybody, today we're on pinwheels. So last time we did, if you're doing them in my order, I mean you might you might not be, but I would advise you to do. I'm doing these videos in order of difficulty. So this is the we did the easiest one to start with, we're now on to the next one. This is our pinwheel block. Uh, you've got four squares of fabric, all the same size. Turn them over. I've already drawn a diagonal line, corner to corner, corner to corner, on one of the prints. So you don't need to do it on all of them. So as long as you do it on like two, I always do it on a whichever, you know. Both the same. They're the same, <laughs> both the same, yeah. And they're the same sort of tone. So no, I can't say light or dark. So I just do it on this one. So uh, what you do is you take your uh, fabrics, place them right sides together. So we can't lay it out as a block yet because we've got to make some components first. Um, and I can see that this hasn't gone quite to the corner. Can you see that, Mark? So if you go, can you go there, right? Nicely pointy in the corner. This one, look, I've gone off. I must have slipped with my ruler. You did an extra bit, actually. I did yeah. an extra bit. And that it, this, this is all about accuracy, you see. So that's what we're aiming to get it be accurate. And you are using a biro. So Does that matter? Uh, yes, that matters. Don't use a biro. You are using a biro. That's what I'm saying. No, that's so that the camera can see it well. Because I've used a million markers, and then you can't see them when I do the little film of it. Yeah. Good question, there, Mark. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm only using the biro for that reason. So now we've got. Now you've got two squares, the same size, with a line drawn. If you feel the need, put, put your pins here out of the way. All they're going to do then is you're going to keep your square in position. They're not going to get in your way at all. Following me. You've had good practice of doing your nine patch block to get your quarter inch right. And remember, if it's been a while since you used your sewing machine, check your quarter inch first. Can do, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because if this is the first, they've only made one block. Mm -hmm. They want to be confident, don't they? So put the put the fabric, two layers, right sides together, underneath your foot at the appropriate place. We're going to stitch a quarter of an inch either side of this drawn line, okay? Do you get that? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so you keep the edge of your foot on your line or the whatever position you're... Point that again. Oh. There. Yeah. So it's a quarter of an inch from the side of the line. There'll be a picture in the pattern, you'll see this. And you stitch a quarter of an inch from the drawn line. And this is called a fast pieced half square triangle. So already we're moving on to a new skill without even trying. Patchwork is just straight lines stitched. That's all it is. Now I'm going to turn this round and I'm not coming out of my machine because I know my machine's, you know, reasonably happy most of the time. It'll probably prove me wrong now. But if you want to come out of your machine, that's perfectly okay. So we're going down the other side now. So this is the first stage of the pinwheel block. But in our case, it's a pinwheel. It could be anything, anything that needs a half square triangle. So we're just going to have photography zip in and take a picture any minute now. Like so. Is that okay? Yeah. And you can see that we've got, this is how your pattern will look. It'll show you stage by stage, your drawn line, and this is your drawn line with your two piece, your two rows of sewing. You can't really see the thread much, but no. yeah, you can. It's okay. I can. You see can. It. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, like we stitched a quarter of an inch either side. So the measurement between this little stitching line. I'm just wait for Mark to come back. This stitching line and the stitching line on the other side is half an inch. Because it's a quarter of an inch both either way. Quarter inch one way, quarter inch the other. So. Just, you know, as a beginner, drop your rule on it and see whether it, this measurement from the one line of stitching to the other is a half. And then, you know, you're on the right track. So we've done that once. We need to do it again. So I'll do pop him under. 
I won't turn, I'll come out this time so you see the difference. It makes no difference to the finished quilt. machine like so turn it round and go back in a bit quick for you. was was that a bit quick for you there mm -hmm. <laughs> so way you go I'll go all the way down this is I'm going to say the most used technique in patchwork, a fast piece of half square triangle. And the reason we do it using squares instead of cutting, you've taken the light away then when you stood in front of it. No, it's okay. Okay, I believe you. Um, the reason we do it like this and not cut triangles is because if you cut a triangle, you've got a bias edge. So if I hold this up to you and you see me pull this edge, you can see how it's stretching? Yeah, that's your bias edge, and then you've got this way and yeah. this way, this yep. way, so that it's the warp and the weft. The warp, <laughs> <laughs> the weft mark size of just just thought, keep going, keep going. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the weft goes to the left and the warp goes down. Okay, and this is your bias edge. Lefty wefty. <laughs> Remember it how you like, okay, girls? And we might have some gentlemen doing it, definitely, aren't we? Definitely, yeah. yeah. So now we've got them both stitched, we have to st cut them apart. Otherwise, we've just got little pockets of nothing. And you go, put your rule on. If you haven't got all this equipment uh, because you've bought a pre-cut pre kit, uh, use a pair of scissors, that's fine. So we're going to slice them apart on the line. Now, if you are using your ruler, make sure you've got your... You know it's firmly down because if it slips too much and you cut your stitch in in trouble phone Sarah she'll send you another piece of fabric <laughs> okay so that's what happens to it next see that yep that's the cut on the line yeah just. I'm good just you see yeah if you look here it's not quite on the line there but it doesn't matter because I haven't gone over the stitching because I know it's stitched accurately so now I'm cutting up again. And what this gives you is two pieces made up of two colours. So now you've got four squares. Yeah, you've got four squares, which we started with. And mm -hmm. we've done a little bit of something to them. And they've become four squares of two colours each. So we press this. I'm going to press it towards my little trees. Uh, a pinwheel is, as it says, it's going round, so don't worry about the direction of your flowers because they will turn with your pinwheel. Pretend you were like in the you know, garden, watching it going round. You think, Mark? Definitely. Yeah. So, I'll pop that there. Then I'm going to do another. I'm going to stitch that towards my flowers as well. Okay, now, what are we going to talk about now, do you think, Mark? Putting it in the right place. Clipping your ears. Oh. <laughs> Could have a little picture there, Sarah? Yeah. So we can see what's going on. Photography, I mean. The photography department. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. So what we're going to do now, these little things here, look at that. Sticky outy bits, so I call them trimming your ears. People call them different things. We just snip that off like that. Snip this one off, preferably with sharp scissors. And you can see the difference. Like it just looks neater to start with, doesn't it? Less bulk. Yeah. It looks neater to yes. start with, yes. doesn't it? Yes. Nobody can. Yes. No, I might as well be alone. Nobody's listening to me. I hope you are out there. So I'm not going to trim all my ears now because it's just... Well, I know I will. I will trim all my ears. So I'm just zipping them off with my cutter because I'm a very skilled person. Because you can do. You don't have to do them with scissors. No. And I'm, I'm not putting any fingers near them either. Okay. Then you go like this. And they all end up nicely up the hoover. Sweeper. 
You're not supposed to have a sabotaging in there. Yeah. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. That's the one. Mark mm. likes vacuuming, so he'll whip them up. So, or you could nip them into your bin straight away and then you wouldn't have to worry about it. Or you could catch a thing. Oh. Or anything like that. We haven't made one of those. What are you doing? This is... Right. What, what you These are all the same. <laughs> this isn't a pinwheel yet. Okay, these are all the same. Got that, Mark. The easiest way to get your pinwheel looking correct, and I don't know if it's just my brain, but I this works for me. This one is here. I'm looking at my print, bottom right. But you love pictures of this. Bottom right, give it a quarter turn. It's now bottom left. Give this one a quarter turn. <laughs> quarter turn. <laughs> if you're in doubt, go that and do a quarter turn. Yeah. So this one, see, it's not right yet. So put it there and do that. So now we've got something that does look a bit like a pinwheel. Do we agree? Yes. Yes. Photography, step in it. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to join these into pairs because we started with four pieces of fabric that could be anything. Now they look completely different, don't they? Yeah. Oh, nice. This is what patchwork's all about. So we're going to join them into pairs. So flip them over. And we're back to that lining up your seam. And if you do this with your fingers, you can feel them click into place. And I'll just peel it back like I did the other one. And you can, oh, it's not, you can't see, can you? You can't see the colour. It's not enough difference, I don't think, to see the colour. But you, so scoosh them into position. Perhaps I need to peel back more. Yeah, there you can see. There you go. Yeah. And then it looks like you can see the contrast and the line, the seam is perfectly in line. And it looks like a lovely little beautiful baby <laughs> pinwheel at this stage. Now, if you do that and you pick it up and you put it back down, what you don't want to do is just think, ah, oh, it's this seam I've got to sew. Because this is where you can go wrong. You can easily stitch the wrong seam at this stage. Have you ever done that, Sarah? Yep. Yeah. Me too. No. <laughs> No, you haven't, Mark. No, I haven't. How many pinwheels have you made? Not many. No, there you go. So put it back on your table. So if you're in doubt, do this. Do your quarter turn again. Put it back into the position. So don't just pick it up. And then if you turn away or answer the phone or anything, it's really easy to do it incorrectly. So pop it back. Lock your seams together. Pop a pin in if you want to. And you're going to stitch down that seam there. say something else to listen to now I've done one seam now rather than take it out of your sewing machine leave it there do this one we're going to stitch this seam here because it's in the middle I'm just going to lock my seams in place and carry on sewing now this is called chain piecing correct chain piecing so what it does and i know this sounds stingy but believe me you know when you make big quilts it's not this is the only amount of wasted thread we've got isn't it if you're especially if your machine doesn't cut your threads you can have like this much like five or six inches at every end and before you know it you're on your next reel of thread and cotton thread which you should be using to piece your patchwork with because it's 100 percent cotton fabric not a polyester cotton polyester cotton mix um you know the price of that in the last couple of years has just shot up so um you know why waste it look all you've got to do snip now i'm going to press put it back because put it back in position put it back in position is that right uh -uh. is that right Bing. good uh so i'm going to press it towards the flowery fabric so I'm pressing that way towards the flowery fabric. And then I'm going to press this one towards the flowery fabric. And what you're aiming for is a beautiful point in the middle. Now, I know we're beginners. Like, you can see that there, look, Mark. You need to get close in there. See that? Yep. Absolutely perfect match. And so is but it's it. it's not in the corner because... You've got your quarter inch, 
Correct. Into, in, take into consideration. Oh, he's gone up a class. He's gone into the. Uh, he's gone into. <laughs> I think I'll stay in the novice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the aim of the game is to get your two pieces together. So we're going to join this one to this one, and then we're going. Again, can you, you couldn't see anything. Sorry. This one to this one now, yeah. and we're going to do it like this. Because we've pressed the seams towards the flowers, the one seam goes this way, and this seam goes that way, opposite. That's this seam goes this way, that one goes that way. Bring them together, like so, and lock them with your fingers. Put your pins in if you want to. Then we're going to join the seams together. Quarter inch as per. Get to the, see, I automatically do it. I stop, I've got to the place I want to be. And now I line up the end bit. And it's amazing once you've been sewing for a while, um, how you can manipulate the fabric to like ease the fabric. Ease is quite, yeah, it's the right word. Okay, so look at my middle. More or less right, look, there's a mm -hmm. little smidge all there, but a, like, a really tiny bit. Now, if you're a perfectionist, you could undo that, but if you don't mind, you can leave it like that. I would leave it like that because this is patchwork, it's not, you know. It's not shop bought precision made with, you know, robots. Um, so I've pressed it to one side, right? Yeah? Yeah. But in order, and, and I've twisted my seam here, which doesn't matter in this case, but I wanted just to show you, in order for it to lie flatter, only with a pinwheel I do this, open your seam. Which this iron's going to be rubbish at this, but... What happens is, I'm just going to do it with my fingers so you can see, it spreads out all of this bulk in the middle. So Because if not, you can end up with eight pieces of fabric going the same way. Ooh. And squash it. But literally... <laughs> that is the technical term. Squash it? Squash it. Why not? And we go down, 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 down. Down, down, down. I'd go slower than this if I were you. And then if you do that, look... Put it back. Go back over to the front. Just give it a final little diddly biddle, and we're away. And this then is block number two, ready for our sampler quilt. Pinwheel. How different does it look from four pieces of fabric? Really nice. Um, so that's our second piece, and I hope you're enjoying it. And next time we're moving on to, can't remember what's next. I think it's a churn dash. Yeah, it is, I think. Uh, but you can w watch them in any, any order you like. So thanks for watching and keep learning. Keep your quarter of an inch correct and have fun. That's the most important thing.